come from a long lineage of military service. I've met my husband in the military. My mother served in the Air Force. My father served in the Air Force. My seven great uncles. I remember my mom telling me that we had relatives that served in the Civil War. It's just what you do, you join the military and you start your life. When I served in the Air Force, I was a broadcast journalist. You might hear people refer to it as a combat journalist. I was a morning show radio host. Award-winning. <laughs> Staff Sergeant Melissa Hay, Maxwell Air Force Base, Alabama. I was living my dream. So through my career progression in the Air Force, I was experiencing these physical ailments, all of these symptoms, the GI symptoms, the not sweating, the fatigue, the pain in my stomach, the unexplained made it very hard to do my job with no diagnosis. I was also getting punished for not meeting standards. So if you can't meet your, your PT standards, then uh, there's a, a disciplinary actions that happen and, and after so many failures at your PT scores, then uh, they, they uh, separate you with, uh, I think it's dishonorable. All of that weighed heavily on my shoulders because I wanted to serve my country. My name is Melissa and I have Fabry disease. Fabry disease is, is a, a very rare disease um, that stems from a deficiency in an enzyme called alpha-galactosidase. So if you don't have those enzymes, what happens is, is that stuff builds up in the stomach of the cell, which is called the lysosome. And eventually, the sum total of that damage or those cells not doing very well causes organ dysfunction. The burning in my hands and feet started at 14. The GI symptoms for me started later teens, early adulthood. I noticed at 18, 19, and into my 20s, it started to get really aggressive. Unfortunately, that disrupted my stomach at just about every meal, in public, at home, at family gatherings. I would have to know where a bathroom was at all times. It's one of those things, you know, patients with rare disease need a lot of care. What happens? They go to other doctors, and those other doctors may not understand the rare disease. When I spoke to my primary care doctor about wanting to be tested for Fabry for an official diagnosis, and she disregarded me, I felt irritated. One of the saddest things is when the female has known for years that they have the disease and they've been seeing providers for years knowing they have the disease and they keep getting told all of their symptoms are nothing because they're just a carrier and nothing could be further from the truth. Soon enough they had all fallen asleep except Thumper. I went to my primary care doctor and I said I want to be tested for this. My father died from it. Here's the doctor you need to send me to. I did all the work so that I could not be disregarded. And she looked at me and said, let me Google that real quick. Yeah, both of your parents have to have that for you to have that, so I don't think you have that. Ready? Absolutely not. I said, you will send me anyway. And she sent me. And two days after I was tested, I was I received my official diagnosis of having Fabry disease. She definitely is a fighter. This saying, take the bull by the horns, is probably 
derivative from from her. So it, it is good to see her her taking steps towards a longevity uh, of her life. Wow! Yeah. I feel like I was given horrible advice leading up to finding out that I had kidney damage. My kidneys showed cellular damage, which could only progress if not addressed. Right, gotta give mama a kiss. Right. Finding out that my kidneys were damaged okay. and being told that it was nothing, that I would never suffer, right, that I would know. never feel anything like a man felt hurt me because I was dismissed. All right, we're gonna go see daddy later. What was really drawing people's attention to Fabry disease was 30 year olds, 35 year olds dying because their kidneys failed. Back then, if your kidneys failed, there was no option, right? So you died. All of this is that we have a window to treat this disease and the window the earlier we start treatment, the more likely we are able to actually change the natural history of this disease and improve quality and quantity of life. I met Dr. Warnock and Dr. Wallace at UAB, and their understanding of what I was going through was, all I could do was smile. The way this is diagnosed is actually being changed. What's happened over the last five, 10 years is the ease of getting genetic testing has improved dramatically. I've just been diagnosed with a disease that killed my father, but all I could do was smile because I may not lose my job. If I am separated or medically retired from the military, it will be on good standards. I had to call my mom. I had to tell her what was happening. I have doctors that know what's happening and they're gonna help me, not only with this disease, but with the career I love and possibly ending it on good terms. In 2014, I began enzyme replacement therapy so how is this treated is one of them is enzyme replacement therapy. The other type of therapy is, is actually called megalostat. The megalostat is oral, so patients take it at home. So the therapy is really good at slowing the progression, but it doesn't reverse all the years of damage that we've had. In 2017, I found out I was pregnant. I was elated. Uh, that was my biggest fear when her and I were trying to conceive was the fact that she could pass it on to our son. And males who are diagnosed with Fabry disease generally live a, their, their life expectancy is significantly less compared to uh, the, the females. Knowing if I had a child, they could inherit Fabry disease, the chances of a girl or a boy inheriting the disease was 50-50. If I had a son and he inherited the disease, my fear was an automatic death sentence. When my son was born, newborn screenings did not include a Fabry screening. That's how rare the disease still is considered. When he was four months old, I told my husband, I can't wait on this any longer. We were gonna wait. He was so young, but something in my head said, just get him tested. I knew in my heart this was the right thing to do. I can't remember how long it took to get that call back, but when the doctor called me and said, Melissa, I have great news. Your son does not have Fabry disease. <laughs> it was just so much off my shoulders. Though I still had to live with the disease, it wasn't a death sentence for my son. He was going to live a healthy life. Ready? Mm -hmm. One. Throw them back in. Okay, let's throw them back in. Straight cross. 
three, and boom! One of our favorite places to go is a local brewery in town that also doubles as our VFW post. We love to go there because it's family friendly, but also it's where the local veterans know that they can go and talk about life experiences and stories of service together in a healthy, safe place. So the prognosis of febrile disease is just getting better and better as we get earlier diagnostics, better access to genetics, earlier implementation of therapy, and then we have all of these things on the horizon um, with clinical trials to, that continually are trying to make this better for patients. Melissa's done quite well. We identified her early, we got her start on therapy early. Today, I'm hopeful for the future with Fabry disease, especially as a woman. I'm now receiving treatment on a study cycle every two weeks. I'm aware of what I'm putting into my body to help myself feel better. I'm here to live a healthy life as a woman, as a mother, and as a veteran who's trying to help veterans. I know what I need to feel good. And I know that medical advancements are moving further and further every day. And that brings me peace.